Monday night and we're back with your daily market dose, Corporate Central, where we get you the everyday pulse of the corporate world. From all the big headlines to tracking all the fluctuations of the market, we get you all the highlights on this show. Let's find out what took place in the corporate world today. Shares of Adani Group were in a stir on Monday due to five news uh, updates. Global index service provider MSCI cut the weightage of Adani Total Gas and Adani Transmission in the index review process for May. The weightage of Adani Total Gas is being reduced from 25% to 14% while the weightage of Adani Transmission has been reduced from 25% to 10%. This change will come into effect from May 11th onwards. After this, uh, the shares of both the companies closed on the lower circuit of 5% on Monday. In another report, Adani Group's flagship company Adani Enterprises has reduced its capital expenditure target from $5.8 billion to $3.8 billion, which is a reduction of more than a third, whereas Adani Enterprises' debt repayment capacity has improved. The Adani Group has also got the backing of three banks of Japan as backers for debt reduction. Also, the market regulator SEBI has widened the scope of investigation into short selling by Hindenburg Research. The government may soon invite financial bids for strategic sale of defence PSU BEML after its non-core business got listed on the bourses last month. In January 2021, the government had invited preliminary bids for selling 26% stake in BEML along with the management control. It received multiple expressions of interest for the sale. Following that, in October last year, BEML demerged its non-core businesses into BEML land assets and listed the new company on the bourses on April 19th, 2023. The government currently holds 54.03% stake in BEML, which is a public sector undertaking under the Defence Ministry. Anil Agarwal-led Vedanta Resources has said that it has repaid loans worth $800 million to Standard Chartered. The company said that it repaid three loan facilities from Standard Chartered Bank in London and Hong Kong. It said that the repayments released the encumbrances created on the shares of its unit Vedanta Limited. This move could ease concerns about its liquidity as per a report in Bloomberg. This comes after the London-based company trimmed its gross debt by $1 billion last month. Meanwhile, Vedanta Netherlands Investment BV, the promoter equity uh, promoter group entity, has uh, cut its stake in the company during the March quarter without reporting the change to the stock exchanges, prompting concerns about the inadequate disclosures. The promoter group cut its stake in Vedanta to 0.13% as of 31st March from 1.71% as of December ending, resulting in a decline in promoter group stake to 68.11% from 69.69% at the end of December quarter. In more news, the government is likely to hold discussions with Vedanta informally on a possible stock market listing of Balco before a firm proposal is made to the aluminium company's board. The government holds a 49% stake in Balco after having divested a 51% stake in 2001 to Sterlite Industries, a subsidiary of Vedanta. The government wants Vedanta to list Balco so that it can offload a part of its stake through the initial public offer route before exiting the company fully in due course. Sajjan Jindal-led JSW Group plans to sell stake in JSW Paints, a company associated with its paint business. Through this stake sale, the company intends to increase its capacity and increase its presence across the country. There is a plan to compete with rival companies as well. JSW Group is valuing its paint business at around $2 billion and has appointed Axis Capital as advisor for sale of its part of its business. Uh, it, it has started preliminary talks with several global private equity funds for stake sale. Tata Group Airlines, Air India, Vistara and Air Asia India have shown the most month-on-month -month improvement among all major carriers in on-time performance during April according to the Ministry of Civil Aviation's data. Air India saw the best improvement among all major carriers uh, with on-time performance increasing from 83.45% in March to 91.63% in April. Air Asia India was the second best among the carriers. Its on-time performance increased from 79.06% to 84.17%. Vistara, which is in the process of being merged into Air India, saw its on-time performance jump from 84.68% to 87.77%. 
Aditya Birla Fashion has announced the purchase of 51% majority stake in women's clothing maker TCNS Clothing. The deal has been fixed between the two companies for 1,650 crore rupees. AB Fashion has also announced a raise by 800 crore rupees. Under this deal, 29% stake will be bought from the promoter group and a conditional open offer will also be launched at a price of 503 rupees, which will increase the total stake to 51%. Under the deal, TCNS will merge with ABFRL and TCNS shareholders will get 11 shares of ABFRL for every 6 shares held. TCNS Clothing's portfolio will include high-end brands names like Wishful, W, Aurelia and uh, brands like Eleven are also included. Apart from ABFRL, private equity investors like Reliance Retail, Nika, Trent as well as TPG Capital were also in the race to buy TCNS. The deal will strengthen the portfolio of women wear brands of AB Fashion. On May 8th, TCNS clothing stock closed at a lower circuit of 20% and AB Fashion stock closed down about 3.5%. And that was all about corporates. Over to some market stocks that were in action today and also analyze the reason behind it. First up, Paytm shares gained more than 5% on Monday after strong quarter 4 results. In quarter 4, the company has registered positive edita, that is operating profit, on an adjusted basis for the second consecutive quarter. In the March quarter, company's adjusted operating profit stood at 234 crore rupees. In the December quarter, the company had declared an adjusted operating profit of 31 crore rupees for the first time. Also, the company's loss in quarter 4 year-on-year year from uh, 7 761.4 crore rupees decreased to 168 crore rupees. Income increased by 51.5 percent from 1,541 crore rupees to 2,334 rupee, uh, crore rupees during this period. Talking about the entire FY23, the company's income grew by 61 percent from 4,974 crore rupees in FY23 to 7,990 crore rupees. This makes Paytm the highest revenue earning a new age company. Adjusted operating loss reduced by 88.4% from 1,518 crore rupees to 176 crore rupees. Brokers are bullish on the stock while City maintains buy and the target price is set up to 1,144 rupees from 1,103 rupees. JP Morgan maintains overweight rating with a target of 950 rupees. Motilal Oswal maintains buy with a target of 900 rupees and City's target is about 60% above the current price of around 725. After the results, the company's founder and CEO Vijay Shekhar Sharma said that the biggest goal is to be free cash flow positive in the short term. And shares of tyre maker Madras Rubber Factory, that is MRF, have created history today. On Monday, May 8th, MRF's shares crossed 1 lakh mark in futures trading. That is, one share of MRF to buy 1 lakh rupees will have to be spent. In the cash segment, MRF touched, uh, touched an all-time high of 99,933.50 rupees on Monday. The stock has gained nearly 16% in a month despite today's fall and has registered a gain of 42% in one year. On May 3rd, 1995, the stock touched the level of 1,000 rupees, while it touched 10,000 rupees in February 2012, 25,000 rupees in September 2014, and 50,000 rupees in September 2016. And then in 2018, it touched 75,000 rupees, and now in 2023, it has crossed the level of 1 lakh. This means that the stock has registered a return of 100 times in the last 28 years. Now let's get to know the reason behind the high price of the stock. Actually, this company has never split its shares, that is, it has not divided itself. According to the information available on the BSC since 2000, MRF has neither announced bonus shares nor split the stock even once till date. In the fourth quarter of FY23, FMCG business company Mariko's results have been very strong. On the back of good results, the stock jumped 9.5% in intraday on Monday and touched a high of 539.80 rupees, which is a 52-week high of 554.35 rupees. Very close to the peak, the company's profit in quarter four has increased by 18.7% year-on-year from 257 crore rupees to 305 crore rupees. 
Working profit has increased by 14 percent to 393 crore rupees from 346 crore rupees. Working margin has improved by 1.53 percent and margin has increased from 16 percent to 17.5 percent. Most brokers have a bullish view on the stock after the results. Motilal Oswal retaining the view of buy at a target of 590 rupees. Sher Khan has also maintained the opinion of buy and has set the target at 645 rupees. Indusind Bank's share was the highest gainer in the Nifty 50 index on Monday. On Friday, May 5th, the stock closed with a loss of about 5.5%. The company's chief risk officer, Ramakrishna Mayapan, had resigned on Friday and the bank has appointed Murlidhar Lakra as the new chief risk officer. But on Monday, the reason behind the recovery in the stock is that the brokers have maintained bullish confidence on this stock. Morgan Stanley has given overweight rating on the stock and a target of 1525 rupees it believes that the resignation of the cro will help the bank and there will be no significant impact on the results jeffries has also set a buy opinion and a target of 1550 rupees according to jeffries the five percent drop in the stock due to the resignation of the chief risk officer is not justified that's all on Corporate Central today. But before we get going over to some major corporate events and also triggers which could have a potential to make market impacts. On May 9th, watch out for results of SRF, Lupin, Apollo Tires, Raymond Castrol India, Godrej Agrovet, SCI, Billa Corp, Rel Infra and Rainind. On May 9th, Mankind in Pharma's IPO is to be listed. IPO was subscribed for a total of 15.3 times. And also, Nexus Select REIT IPO will open from May 9th to 11th. The price band is at 95 to 100 rupees per unit and plans to raise around 3,200 crore rupees. Ex-dividend date of 225 rupees of OFSS is also on May 9th. That's all on today's Corporate Central episode. We'll be back with more new corporate updates tomorrow. Until then, stay tuned to Money Night.